Welcome back to the best trading indicators for 2021, part four. And in this video, we're gonna be discussing the relative strength index. So after this video, you should understand exactly how to best use a relative strength index to give you extra edge in the market. There are a ton of videos out there on the relative strength index. I've made plenty of them. So in this video, I'm gonna give you the fast track way to use the relative strength index correctly in the way that it is mostly taught from most YouTube videos, which is actually somewhat incorrect to use it that way. So let's jump into the video. The first thing that you will be taught if you look at most articles, blogs, and videos on YouTube we're getting regarding uh, the relative strength index, it will say this. When the relative strength index is below this line, the market is oversold. And when it is above this line, the market is overbought. And that you would essentially take action in the opposite direction, meaning when the market is up here, you wouldn't buy the stock because it's too overbought and you should probably sell the stock. And when it's down below this line, you probably shouldn't sell the stock, you should probably look more or less to buy the stock. Now, if you look at the relative strength index and you actually track stocks on this base that they're overbought and oversold, you will come to the conclusion that it does make quite a bit of sense. I mean, if you look at the market here, overbought, you'll see that it does in fact pull back. Or when you look at the market here, overbought, or overbought it does pull back. You look at the market here, overbought, overbought, it does pull back. Oversold, it ends up bouncing a little bit. Overbought, not much of a pullback there. Overbought, pulls back. So there is some truth to the fact it does kind of work that overbought, oversold scenario. But let me point it out like this. So the market's overbought, you don't buy, or you sell your position because it's overbought. Then the market goes higher. So the relative strength index doesn't really do a good job at helping you predict trend. So you can see a lot of overbought and oversold scenarios. And then if you follow that on a buy sell basis, you would essentially take yourself in and out of profitable trades all the time. So this is just one stock example. Now let's go take a look at, let's say like Tesla today. So if we looked at Tesla, all right, it would say that the market was oversold here and that you should not uh, sell it, you should buy it. So if you go on that basis, you would have bought here and the market would have sold out. Or you would have never sold short because it said don't sell it and then it keeps going lower. And here's another good example. We go from, oh, if we go to oversold and the market just stays oversold. So again, that's really the problem that you will run into if you listen to most of the videos and blogs in regards to relative strength index, doing it on a buy sell basis from an oversold to overbought perspective when you look at this. And to be more specific, this is the 30 line and this is the 70 line. This is sort of the predetermined settings for the relative strength index. You could actually adjust those and make them a little bit stronger by going up to like 80, 75, or 25 and 20, meaning you really only consider those to be oversold or overbought when they exceed those levels. So you could put some more rules uh, or the, you could change the parameters of the relative strength index so that um, maybe it doesn't pick up as many false signals is kind of what I'm getting at. So that's the way it's mostly gonna be taught, um, but now I'm gonna teach you the way that it's actually effective. So you wanna use the relative strength index for catching divergences. Um, that's normally what I use it for, and if you simply just use it to track divergences, you're gonna start to see when trends are actually going to change. So the relative strength index will help you understand that trend is going to change before it actually happens. So the way you go about finding that is you look for a divergence. Um, I'm just gonna pop through stocks because it happens, it happens all day, um, happens all the time. So here's one. All right, so you wanna use a relative strength index like this. Market's going down, market hits kind of this bottom and bounces. You'll see that when we go straight down, the relative index was down at whatever, 20, doesn't really matter, but it was way oversold, right? So then you will see that the market bounces and then it actually goes through the previous low of the market on AMD and Pretz in a new low. You would go, oh my gosh, this is bearish, it's gonna keep going down. Well, take a second, go down and look at the relative strength index. You will notice that the relative strength index is now uptrending while the market is trying to go into a new low. That is what we call a divergence, where you see the price action is decreasing to new lows while the momentum on the RSI is uptrending. That is what we call a bullish divergence. So again, the way to explain it, 
A bullish divergence only happens after a sell-off or after a sort of a bottoming move because again, a bullish divergence takes form after a bearish move. We go down, we usually bounce, do some sort of move, and then we go into a new low, creating what looks like a new low downtrend. But simultaneously, there's an uptrend on RSI, and there's always gonna look like that. And that is typically a telltale sign that there's going to be a reversal in the stock. So you would essentially start to look for entries around this bottom area when you get a divergence to hopefully catch the true bounce on the day. So we will go ahead and we'll pop through a couple more stocks on the day to see if this occurred anywhere else. We will take a peek at AMC today. All right, the reason I said AMC is because I knew it already happened. So AMC, we have a move up on the day. The RSI gets overbought, it tops. Market pulls back, market goes through a new high. Uptrending move, downtrending RSI, market pulls back. So again, that is the most effective way that you're gonna to wanna to use the RSI, tracking for bearish or bullish divergences. And in this instance, what I just showed you here with the RSI on, uh, on AMD, this is what we call a bearish divergence. Bearish divergence happen, happens after an advance in the stock to the upside direction. Market goes to the up, puts in a top, pulls back, tries a new high or a new, new move, puts in an uptrend, and it also can be a double top, but more often or not, they're probably gonna be a slightly uptrend here. So you will get move, move, descending uh, momentum, bearish divergence. All right, this can happen on one minute time frames, five minute time frames, any time frame, yearly time frames. Just so you guys are aware, we're gonna go look at the S&P 500 and I'm gonna show you this, I think on a 20 year chart maybe. Um, all right, just before the coronavirus pandemic, okay? Relative strength index, this is back when like President Trump just got in pretty much. Uh, so you can see market was all the way up here, RSI really overbought. Market trends into a new high, downtrending momentum, boom. So realistically, before the coronavirus pandemic, as the S&P 500 is moving into new highs, it was already doing it on less momentum. So whether you wanna argue that somebody knew something before somebody knew something, I'm not gonna have that debate. Nonetheless, the RSI was there to prove to you that we are having descending momentum as the markets try to put in new highs on the S&P 500. What ends up resulting next? Big downtrending move. You will also see now on the 20 year chart, the market is trending very high into all time highs and there is no bearish divergence. As the market goes up, the RSI has been going up. So that means everything in the market is equal right now. There is nothing that doesn't make sense in the current market structure and everything is kind of ho-hum diddly-dum. That is why if you watch our morning market analysis every single day, which we do do every single day from 8 a.m. to 11 a.m., we do live market analysis for you guys. Um, we usually just mention that the markets are kind of just on the up. There's really no reason to be bearish for the time being and we're probably just gonna keep ho-humming until something crazy happens, all right? Now, if we look at, say, a yearly chart, you will probably start to see a possible divergence. Uh, not really. Now, if we look at a four hour, maybe, eh, kind of, but not really. You can see there's a slight one here, but I wouldn't even consider that a big one. So nonetheless, I will say before we hop off for the day, I will take one more look at some random stock, which will look at ATVI on the day. So let's go look at the one minute chart. I normally use uh, the bearish divergence more bearish divergence or bullish divergence most often, uh, like on a one minute chart throughout the day. This is a terrible stock for the day, does not really help us. Uh, this also had one here. All right, so like Facebook today. Facebook drops down, goes to here, markets are oversold, drops into a new low, downtrending, move on price action, uptrending move on RSI, and it ends up bouncing. So again, it's such a common thing to see on a one minute chart, normally happens all the time throughout the day. So this is something that I highly suggest that you use throughout the day when it comes to RSI and trying to predict or understand which way the markets are gonna be moving next after sell-offs and after advances in the stock. Look at the RSI, look for uptrending momentum or downtrending momentum on the RSI when the stock is doing the opposite thing. So with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, that is the correct way to use a relative strength index going forward. Hope you guys liked the video. Make sure to hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and don't forget to tune in to our morning live streams every single day, Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. That being said, we will see you on the next video. Take care.